Praise the Lord. Rise up as we pray together. Our God in heaven, we thank you very much for our Bible study tonight once again. We thank you for the health and the strength you have given us. Thank you, Lord, for the great desire you have given us to study your word. We know you are preparing us for something great and wonderful in the future. And Lord, we pray as you are taking all the pains to prepare us with you, we'll be yielding to you and submitting to you to be well prepared for what you have for every one of us in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that these words will not only enrich our lives, it will make us enrich the lives of other people. And Lord, as we study, we'll be doers of the word. And the obedience to the word will bring blessings into our lives and to the lives of people around us in Jesus' name. Open our eyes of understanding that we may behold great, wondrous things in your word even tonight. Bless us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We can see now. We're coming back to the Sermon on the Mount. That is the message of Jesus Christ to all his followers, all his disciples of that generation, as well as this generation. I'm sure you understand that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if Jesus were to come here today, he will not change a point. He will not change a word. He will not change any of the statements he made when he was here on earth. Because as he was, so you see today. And what he said before, he's still saying today. And what he required before, is what he still requires today. And if Jesus Christ were to be physically here today to teach us, the great teacher come from heaven. The teacher filled with the spirit of God. The teacher speaking the mind of God. If he were to be here today, he will be saying exactly the same thing to you. The condition of discipleship has not changed. And the requirement of those who follow the Lord Jesus Christ has not changed. That's why we're taking our time. And we're looking at the word of Christ. Wanting him to speak to us today. As he spoke to them in days and years gone by. We're making progress in our study. We started from Matthew chapter 5. Now we're in chapter 6. And as we come to chapter 6, we're now in verse 19. We're looking at verses 19 through to 21 tonight. Look at it with me. Matthew chapter 6. Verse 19. Lay not all for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust does corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay all for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You see, Jesus Christ tonight is speaking to us about treasures. You look at verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth. Talking about treasures. Then in verse 20, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Then you find in verse 21, for where your treasure is. There will your heart be also. The Lord is talking to us about our life here on earth. And in our future, the future glory in heaven. Look at verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. It's saying that yes, you are now in the world, you are now on the, on the earth. But don't ever think that the end of life here on earth is the end of everything. Because you are a never dying soul. You live here on earth today, and then you appear in glory in the future, in heaven. And because of that, lay some treasures in heaven. Don't spend all your effort, all your desires, all your interest, all your ambition, all your preoccupation on things on earth. And then he talks now about the future in verse 20. 
And in verse 20 here is what he says. And here's how he says it. But clear for yourselves treasures in heaven. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke about heaven with assurance. He knew very well that God is in heaven. The angels are in heaven. And he was going to heaven. There was no doubt in his heart because that's where he came from. There are many people today that do not believe there is life after death. They do not understand there is something beyond this earth. But the Lord Jesus Christ makes us to understand there is heaven. There is heaven. Every time he prayed, he said, Father in heaven. He looked up every time, never looking down. Looking up to heaven every time, saying, Father. And therefore we know that as real as God is, so real is heaven itself. Now he says, what are to do with heaven? And what are to do on earth? That's what you have, verse 21. He says, for where your treasure is, if your treasure is here on earth, your heart will be here, your mind will be here, your interests will be here, your desires will be here. When you hear about death, you'll tremble. Because all your attention, all your heart, all your desires are here pinched down on earth. And you're so much afraid to leave this world. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. If you lay your treasures in heaven, then your heart will be in heaven. Your desires will be in heaven. And then your aspiration, your preoccupation will be in heaven. You'll want to go there because you know that is where your treasure is. And you want a great reward when you get over there. Now, as we talk about this tonight, laying up treasures in heaven, we need to understand what those treasures are. Christ's exhortation concerning our treasures actually is twofold. Have you noticed that? One, negative. Lay not up. Number two, positive, lay up. The negative part concerns the earth. Lay not up your treasures on earth. And the positive part con concerns heaven, the future, the glory, the place you are going in the future. You lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. The word treasures is very broad and it is all inclusive. Meaning the wealth you have Don't lay it up here on earth Lay it up in heaven Or the costly things such as property Or land or gold or precious stone Don't lay those things here on earth Lay them in heaven And in possession including money Don't spend all your money On things of the present day Of the present time On this earth Think about heaven all those resources you have, all the property you have, all the precious things you have, even your talents, even your gifts, even your abilities. Don't spend everything on things on earth. Be thinking about heaven. How can I make use of what I have in laying my treasures in heaven? And the Lord was actually saying that he was warning us that we must not confine our ambition, our interest, our preoccupation to this life. Everyone needs this exhortation because we all have treasures in some shape or form. No matter who you are, you have something precious, something profitable, something important, something you have that other people do not have. And the Lord is saying to you and to me, to everyone, to the young and to the old, to the men, to the women, to the poor, to the rich. He's saying, you have some treasures. He did not exempt everyone when he gave this message. And he said, those treasures you have, lay them in heaven, not here on earth. And he says, both the poor and the rich, the young and the old, as we all have treasures, we can lay up those treasures either on earth or in heaven. The first part of Christ's command teaches us not to lay them here, not to store them here on earth. But then, and, and he gives us the reason why. What reason did he give? Turn with me to your Bible in that Matthew chapter 6, looking at verse 19. It tells us what not to do. And then it gives us the reason why we are not to do it. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 19. It tells us, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. 
now there's the reason you are not to lay it up on earth where moss and rust does corrupt those things will lose value here on earth the rust the decay the destruction that will come as time goes on and then it says where thieves break through and steal because it's also possible for thieves to break through and to take those treasures away those precious things away it says then it will be of no value of no good to you to anybody when the thieves come and they take them away lay them in heaven and then as he tells us this second part laying the treasures in heaven he also gives us the reason why verse 20 but lay off for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt it tells us that in heaven those treasures will be secured and the rust will not destroy them there will be no corruption or decay spoiling or destroying any of those treasures another reason where thieves do not break through nor steal that the thieves cannot get over there to steal to take away what you have it says because of the security because of the protection because of the preservation that's available for your treasures when you lay them up in heaven how wise it is for you and for me to lay those treasures in heaven those who lay up treasures for themselves in heaven they'll be think they're thinking of the future they're planning for their future actually both people those who lay their treasures on earth they're thinking about the future too they're saving for the rainy day they're thinking about the future here on earth that's their foolishness they think about the future but only the future here on earth but those who lay their treasures in heaven they are wise because they too they are thinking of the future but they are thinking of the future in heaven that's why then we ought to be wise so that our treasures are laid up in heaven where we'll be able to have eternal rewards those treasures then will be imperishable there i pray god will make us wise we'll divide the study tonight to three parts number one temporal things termed treasures on earth temporal things material things natural things the things you have that are tangible your money your precious things your property your wealth your riches those are the things that are termed treasures here on earth number two the tragedy of laying treasures on earth the danger the tragedy of those who lay their treasures on earth and before they know what they've lost everything to decay to destruction and to the robbers and to the thieves the tragedy of laying your treasures here on earth number three treasury for our treasures in heaven god keeps the treasury and when you send them to heaven they get there before you and then when you eventually get there what great reward you have as a result of those treasures that to send to heaven before you we're going to take them one by one point number one the temporal things that are termed treasures here on earth we need to settle this so you will know what jesus means when he uses the word treasure then you will understand what it's actually referring to and then you'll be able to say here is my treasure here is my precious thing and here is where i am laying those treasures those precious things what are those things from the earliest of times actually from the time of jacob in genesis where reach that the term treasures actually was identified with money that's the very first thing you find as you look at the bible that the term treasure 
It's actually referring to money, but there are other passages and references of scripture that identify the treasure that tell us what those treasures are as riches and wealth and possession and the produce of the field and the reward of your labor the silver and the gold the gifts and the inheritance that's the treasure and so as we're talking about treasures tonight you then have in your mind all the money you have in your possession that's your treasure the riches and the and the wealth and the prosperity you have that is your treasure the possession that you have in one form or the other that is the treasure and the gain or the profit you have that is the treasure whatever else it is the things that can produce something gainful in your life that's the treasure the inheritance somebody has also bequeathed unto you in ancient times treasures also included their clothes and changes of raiment as well as silver and gold and gems and lands and oil it meant actually the treasure meant anything possessed which could be used to provide the present and future comfort or convenience in life men often lay up these treasures or the money or the earthly possessions in some places they lay them on earth i'll show you when we get there and let's look at the bible in genesis chapter 43 and let us see what the bible has to reveal concerning what treasures are genesis chapter 43 and i'm reading from verse 19 genesis 43 verse 19 and they came near these were the the brothers of joseph actually the sons of jacob they were coming for the for the second time from their place from the land of canaan and they were coming to the land of egypt they wanted to buy food when it came the first time joseph had directed that they should put their money in the in their bags and, and just give them the food but he didn't know as they then were going in the way they opened their sacks and they found the money there now they came for the second time that's what we're reading about now as they came for the second time to buy they brought the money that they originally fell somebody made a mistake and put it in their sack and they brought the money now to buy the food they will need at this time with that background now you understand the story we're reading verse 19 and he came near to the steward of joseph's house and they commute with him at the door of the house and said oh sir we came indeed now at the first time to buy food and it came to pass when we came to the inn that we opened our sacks behold every man's money notice that word money every man's money was in the mouth of a sack and our money in full wage and we have brought it again in our hand you understand they were talking about money go on to verse 22 and the other money have we brought down in our hands to buy food we cannot tell who put our money in our sacks now you know they are talking about money let's see now what the steward called that money verse 23 and he said peace be to you fear not your god and the god of your father has given you treasure in your sacks did you say you found money in your sacks that's the treasure the lord the god of your fathers has given you treasure in your sacks i had your money and he brought simeon out unto them so that we understand when we're talking about treasures we're talking about money proverbs chapter 15 verse 16 proverbs chapter 15 and we're reading verse 16 we're looking at the meaning the term treasure and then we're trying to find out what the scriptures refer to as treasure proverbs 15 verse 16 better is little with the fear of the lord than great treasure and trouble therewith this is talking about possession better is a little possession 
with peace peace of mind rest in your soul joy in your life satisfaction contentment within your family better is a little possession than great treasure and trouble there we so you understand here now treasure also means possession in proverbs chapter 21 verse 6 the treasure the wealth the treasure is the wealth chapter 21 verse 6 the getting of treasures by lying tongue is a vanity toss to and fro of them that seek death it's talking about how people acquire property how people acquire wealth how people acquire riches and it calls that treasures it says uh, the getting of treasures the getting of money the getting of wealth the getting of riches the getting of treasures by a lying tongue is vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death ecclesiastes chapter 2 we're tracing from the Bible what treasures are. So you will understand when Jesus says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures on the earth. When moss and rust does corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. When neither moss nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves cannot break through nor steal. For where your treasure is there, or your heart be also. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 8. I gathered me also silver and gold. These are the treasures for him. And peculiar treasure of the kings and of the provinces. And you see what he means here. He says, I gathered silver and gold. Then in the next breath, he says, I'm referring to my treasures. Treasures for them was silver and gold. And the Lord is saying, Your silver and gold don't lay it here on earth. When we say silver and gold, you know that's referring to money. When Peter says silver and gold, have I none? But what I have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Peter was referring to money, riches, wealth, silver and gold, have I none? And so, as Solomon was talking about silver and gold, he was talking about the peculiar treasures, but then he meant more. I got me men singers and women singers. He counted the men singers and the women singers as treasure. Can you imagine that? He said, you know, because they entertained him, because they made him happy, because they made him lose his sorrow because they made him just relax himself he counted the music and the men and the women singing he counted them as treasure what a revelation that is that if you have the gift of music don't use that gift for just here on earth it's a treasure don't lay that treasure here on earth lay it in heaven use that treasure of men singers and women singers and the music you see to lay treasures of souls in heaven that's what he's telling us and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments and that of all souls solomon said that's my treasure and the lord is saying if you have those musical instruments don't lay them here on earth don't use them for the flesh but use them to lay your treasure in heaven so I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me and whatsoever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. And I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And this was my portion of all my labor. That's what he's telling us. Now the riches, your riches are your treasure. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 6 verse 7. Your riches, your wealth, your prosperity, that's your treasure. So you understand now when Jesus said, Lay not all for yourselves treasures on earth, but lay all for yourselves treasures in heaven. Treasures are riches. Look at this now. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 6. The burning of the beasts 
of the south in the land of trouble and anguish from whence come the young and old lion the viper and the fairy flying serpents they will carry their riches listen to this now they will carry their riches their riches their riches upon the shoulders of young asses and their treasures upon the bunches of camels to a people that shall not profit them he mentions on the one hand the riches and then immediately he now turns around and he says he's talking about treasures so then you understand riches are treasures and the treasures are riches but you know in the olden days many of those people had their treasures as just the produce of their farm the crops from their farm even today farmers have a lot of crops and cocoa for some people will be their treasure and the field of rice will be their treasure and the field of edible things something you can eat which is marketable food they will take to the market and sell the food becomes their treasure it's not just for consumption in the family it's for sale because they can sell it and make money that crop then becomes their treasure jeremiah chapter 41 verse 8 jeremiah chapter 41 we're looking at verse 8 but ten men were found and were found among them that said unto ishmael slay us not for we have treasures in the field don't slay us don't kill us we have treasures in the field tell me what do you mean what do you mean by treasures in the field of wheat and of barley and of oil and of honey you see and they counted those things that people can take and sell and make a lot of money agricultural products they counted them as treasure and the lord is telling us that you know from all those references you can tell that the lord was saying all the things you have your property all the things you have your riches all the things you have your wealth all the things you have do not lay them here on earth but lay them in heaven and uh, let me show you an example of a person like that in hebrews chapter 11 hebrews chapter 11 i'm reading from verse 24 hebrews 11 verse 24 we're talking now about about moses he was wise even though he lived long long time ago he knew that the treasures he had something he had to do with that lay that up in heaven and don't lay your treasures here on earth don't spend all your time all your energy all your resources all your thoughts all your planning all your preoccupation on things on earth think about heaven and think about the glory to come hebrews chapter 11 verse 24 by faith moses when he was come to years refused to be called the son of pharaoh's daughter that was a great decision he didn't know what was coming in the future but took that decision and the decision you take today will determine where you will be in the future actually i need to tell the background to the story that the pharaoh's daughter did not have any son and uh, the pharaoh on the throne after dying we need somebody on the throne you know that normally and they didn't have any space for the daughter to become the king and the leader the governor over the whole nation of egypt and now eventually this uh, daughter of pharaoh found moses and then as they found moses he adopted moses to become his own, our own son and then raising up that son moses so that when moses grew up he'll be again a son of a pharaoh's daughter and now he'll be able to reign and his treasure will be the opportunity and the privilege to become a king in the most civilized nation of the world at that time and we're told that moses when he grew up he refused he said no i don't want that treasure i'm laying my treasure in another place i'm giving my heart my mind my interest my ambition in in another scene in verse 25 choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of god than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season the pleasures of sin what's the pleasures of sin 
uh, what, what the Bible means, the privilege of reigning in Egypt. The privilege of reigning, being a chief, being a king, being a leader over those idolatrous people, over the magicians, over the astrologers, over the people in Egypt. You know that that's what some people are running after today. They want to be chief in their local government. They want to be king in, you know, their community. They want to go into all those idolatrous things because they're looking for the fame, the popularity. They're looking for everything attached to that position of being a chief and a king. But Moses said, no, not me. Because in that verse 25, he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of, of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Riches, treasures. Ex he was esteeming, exalting, promoting, e evaluating more the reproach of Christ to be greater riches than the pleasures of sin, than the treasures in Egypt, for he had recompense. On the, he, had, he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. You'll see then what the Lord is telling us. He's telling us to have that same mind that you'll not lay your treasures here on earth, but you'll lay your treasures in heaven. And Lord Jesus Christ cautions us and he wants us against hoarding money, our money, or the valuables where there are needs when there are needs to be met around us laying up treasures for ourselves here on earth it's an evidence that our hope is here on earth our faith our trust is is in our wealth in our riches we must provide for for our family of course and for uh, provide for all the needs of our dependence but then our heart our trust must not be in those riches lay your treasures in heaven god will help us we're looking at point number two now. In point number two, we're talking about the tragedy of laying your treasures here on earth. The tragedy of laying treasures here on earth. Matthew chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 19. I want to remind you once again, these are the very words of Jesus. And if Jesus were here today, I told you already, he will be saying exactly the same thing. Because you see many, many times the hearts and the minds of people are bound with treasures on earth. Their hearts are glued, gummed to the treasures on earth. Their hearts and their souls are pinned to the dust of the earth. And the Lord is saying, if you're a child of God, there is a future. If, if you're a child of God, this world will soon end. And therefore you lay your treasures not on the earth. You lay your treasures in heaven. Matthew chapter 6 verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves. For yourselves. For yourselves. Actually, I was talking about selfishness, self-centeredness. You know, there are people that whatever they have, they don't know there's any need. They don't know there's a preaching of the gospel. They don't know there's a building of the kingdom of God. They don't know there are needy people to help and to support. They don't know there is a church to build. They don't know there is anything spiritual to do or the money. All they know is themselves and they lay everything up for themselves, for themselves. But the Lord is saying, if you're a follower of Christ, if you're a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, lay not up for yourselves treasures on the earth. And it tells us the tragedy and danger where moss and rust, doors corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. As you look at uh, many people that, you know, this is what they do. They lay their treasures on that. They never think. You know, so, and sometimes you will find it in our country and in many other countries too. Sometimes those banks become either fraudulent or, you know, some things happen. They just suck all the workers there. And then all the money you have kept there, everything is gone. Or you might spend years, another 10, 15 years asking for your money and you cannot find the money because the bank has gone bankrupt. Or somebody has taken some billions of your know, currency, has taken everything away and now you cannot find what you kept there. That's why Jesus said, lay not up for yourselves, treasures on the earth. Not only that, there are times there are people who are laying those treasures, they just tag them up and they do not make use of them. 
children are suffering they will not feed them wives are suffering they will not feed those wives and they themselves are almost living from hand to mouth and the money is there and they will not spend the money and the gospel is there they will not give any literature gospel literature gospel tracts and gospel materials cases and video or whatever with their money never they just tank the scene up and they put all the money in the bank the church is being built the headquarters church and our local churches were building those churches and the money they just put it in the bank and jesus said that's not what to do he said lay not off for yourselves for yourselves think about the kingdom think about the church think about your family think about the needs around you think about heaven think about spiritual things Think about lost souls and lay not up for yourselves treasures on the earth. And if you believe in the rapture, if you put all the money in the bank, you're not even touching it. You're only monitoring. It's growing. It's not this million. Now it's getting to a billion. Just watching it. When the rapture takes place, the dead in Christ shall rise. And then we which are alive will be caught away together with them in the clouds. So to, to be forever with the Lord. And if you go in the rapture, you leave all the billions behind for the Antichrist to make use of, to establish a kingdom of Antichrist. How does that profit you? Lay not all for yourselves treasures on the earth. Uh, have you sometimes uh, found... They tell us the fire breaks out and that, uh, you know, many story building where the bank is, everything is burnt down. And then we cannot find anything. Even the human beings, you know, some of them are burnt to death. And all your money there, burnt into ashes. What are you going to do? Lay not up for yourselves treasures on the earth. Be wise and lay them in heaven. Where moth, nor rust, nor fire, nor destruction will not come to destroy. And where thieves do not break through and steal. That's what the Lord is telling us. He's saying that the selfish practice of laying up treasures or riches for ourselves only. Without any regard to using our wealth for the good of our generation. Or the support of the gospel. Without using our treasures for the glory of God. He says that is forbidding and is condemned by christ every one of us is only a steward to spend or dispense god's treasure entrusted to us for the glory of god for the gospel of christ and for the good of our fellow men the lord has given us his threefold reason for the divine precept not to lay our treasures for ourselves here on earth it says and lay not up your treasures here on earth number one because they're liable to destruction and decay they can be eaten up by moss and rust number two it says there is inherent decay that pertains to all earthly things and those treasures laid up they will lose value because of the problem that human things have it says like decay is all i see around and you know there are sometimes the change uh, the change uh, notes uh, in the country you know it happened so many many years ago just many years ago what happened is that you know they were spending a particular kind of currency and they knew they, they thought that there are people that were not bringing their money to the bank and uh, so eventually the government actually in one country nearby here the the bank uh, wanting they wanted to change uh, the currency and what they did they just they didn't give too long notice and they changed their currency and then, then they, they put a date and they said by this date the old currencies will be out of use out of date nobody will accept them anymore and some people in that country nearby country here uh, some of them i uh, think committed suicide because you know they just had millions and billions of their currency and now within it, two weeks that they gave them everything uh, you know became useless they didn't know what to do and uh, don't you know the, what they are saying in this country now don't they say they are suspending it but you can never tell you can never tell as they say now they want to change the currency of you know what we're spending here in the country and change it to another kind of you know denomination 
Now you might think that will never take place, but you know, once they start something like that, eventually they're going to carry it out. And if you're just tacking it up, millions and billions, eventually everything becomes useless in your hand. But the Lord, the Lord knew all that ahead of time. That's why He's saying, "Don't lay up your treasures here on earth." spend it for the kingdom spend it for the gospel spend it for the needy spend it on the on the needs in the church because they will lose value eventually inflation or destruction can overtake them these earthly treasures little for many years can be stolen that's point number three of the lord jesus christ in number one either you have decay or destruction or rust or inflation number two is either that you know they will not be they will not be of value anymore number three is that they can be stolen and the owners can be taken away from the earth leaving those treasures behind then what will you do at that time? That's why the Lord is saying, don't lay them up, use them, spend them for the good of the, of the, of the generation in which you belong. And then for the good of the gospel. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 10. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. That's the problem. You know, if you're, if you're putting it in the bank, even though you're hungry, you'll not spend it. it it's almost, it's almost 10,000. If I take out of it, it will get less. I want you to reach 10,000. And then when it reaches 10,000, and then there's a little change above it, I, I will soon get to 15,000. And then it gets to 15,000. You are getting hungry. You have an ulcer. You don't want to take anything out of that, out of that money and spend. And you hear about needs of the gospel in the church. No, I want that train to reach 15,000. And then it's now 16,322. I don't like that change on top of it. I want it to reach 20,000. I want a round figure. And that's how you just be saying until it becomes maybe about a million and then two million. And then you are rejoicing. The thing is there in the bank, but you are suffering. You are dying. And the gospel is not being preached because the money is there in your pocket in your bank. And you are not bringing it out. That's why it says in verse 10, He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. Nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This also is vanity vanity of the world in verse 11 when goods increase they increase but eat them and what good is there to the owners thereof saving the beholding of them with their eyes the sleep of a laboring man is sweet whether you eat little or much but the abundance of the rich will not suffer you will not permit you will not allow him to to sleep and so you find that's how people spend their lives in first timothy chapter 6 first timothy chapter 6 we're reading from verse 6 but godliness with contentment is great gain godliness with contentment is great gain thank god for those who are always at the bible study i said i thank god for you who are always at the bible study uh, but you know some people treasures on earth the pursuit of riches will not allow them to even study the bible even sunday they will not be able to come to sunday worship they're pursuing they're pursuing they are never satisfied they've got one job they're looking for another job on top of that they're doing two jobs and they're doing overtime as well they're having a job and they're going for extra moral studies and they're having classes even on sunday and from monday to friday they are working and they're getting money and then on sunday they're going to school again and they're not preparing for the future they're not preparing for heaven all their mind all their ambition is certificate upon certificate they have had the first degree they want the second degree they've got the second degree they want to have a doctorate they won't have doctorate they want to have profession they want to pass professional exam and because of that they don't have any time at all to serve the lord but godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain that we can carry nothing out all that money you put in the bank you'll not carry them out of the world when you die you are gone and all the certificates you are trying to have accumulate you're not going to carry them out of the world and all the you want to 
buy land in this city, land in another city, land another city, land overseas and land everywhere. You're not going to carry them out of the world. When you die, you die. And then people will be fighting over them. Unfortunately, then, you know, uh, they, they, even some of your children, the lawyers, had, the, uh, uh, the administrators will beat them off it. They'll say, no, you don't look like uh, Mr. So-and-so. And so, why are people just like this and they just have all these things tacked up and they're not thinking about their future? That's why Jesus was calling his own disciples to wisdom. We brought nothing into this world. And it is certain, it is sure, we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us, let us therewith be content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. And into many foolish and hurtful laws which draw men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of treasures, just to see the bank account going big, is the root of all evil. Just amassing it treasures, certificates, property, prosperity, riches, wealth. And becomes so heavy on you, you can hardly move. It says, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee from these things, free from just the selfish amassing of wealth, and do something useful with your life. I pray God will give us wisdom. A good amen now. In Luke chapter 12, Luke chapter 12, and let's see how, you know, these people of the world, and unfortunately, some people, carnal people in the kingdom, unfortunately, backsliding people in the church, let's see the, the way they think, and the way they, and they just amass everything on earth, they're not thinking about heaven. We're told in Luke chapter 12, verse 15, and he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness. Beware of covetousness, that possessive spirit. I want, I want, I want, I want. I desire, I pursue, I want to possess, I want to have this, I want to have this, I want to have that. I've got this, I'm not satisfied. I've got this, I want more. I've achieved this, I want more. I've got this certificate, I want more. I've got this job, I want more. I've got this money, I want more. I'm in this office, I want more. And there are people like that. They're never satisfied. I'm getting this salary, that's not enough. I'm getting this rise in pay, increasing my salary, that's not enough. Always wanting more and more and more. Beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the things, in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he, he thought within himself, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to lay to bestow my fruits. Nothing for heaven, only for this world. Are you like that? All the money, only for this world. Even to pay tithes, to be doing some kind of a carnal, sinful, arithmetic, mathematics with God. And when you divide the thing up, if it remains a little change, then you want to put that in your pocket. Be wise. And lay your treasures in heaven. Be wise and don't lay all your treasures here on earth. The moth and the rust will corrupt and destroy and the thieves may break through and steal lay your treasures in heaven and he thought within himself in verse 17 saying what shall i do because i have no room where to bestow my fruits and he said this will i do i will pull down my bands and build greater and there will i bestow he said and there will i bestow all my fruits and my goods and I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much good treasure laid up for many years. Take then ease, eat and drink and be merry. But God said unto him, you have no rule over your life. You have no control over your time. And over the space, over the span of life, the period you spend on earth, that's in the hands of God. And that God, you don't remember him. You are laying all your treasure on earth. 
But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? This night your soul will be required of you. All the things are stacked up, all the things are piled up, all the things are saved in the bank. Who will spend them? Where will you be? And where will they be? So is he that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. That will not be your Lord. That's what the Lord is telling us in John chapter 6, verse 27. John 6, verse 27. Labor not for the meat which perishes. Labor not for the meat which perishes. Labor not for the property which perishes. Labor not for the treasures which perishes. As you think about it, think about how large our church is. You know, sometimes we're looking for coordinators we cannot find. They, call, they are there. There are people who have been in the church for 10 years. If you're in this church for five years, coming to the Bible study, marking your Bible, having all those outlines, you can be a pastor. You know more. Some of us who have been here for only five years, you know more than the people they call bishops in some other places. And then there are people here who have been here for 10 years, for 20 years. And then we say we're looking for coordinators. And we say we have to match those districts there because we don't have coordinators to cover them. Yes, we have coordinators, but they're all for money, making money. And they're all for laying treasures on the earth. Their heart, their mind, their interest, not on the things here in the church, in the kingdom. And sometimes we're looking for women coordinators. They are there. But those women coordinators, you know, they, they want, they, they're qualified, but they can't do it. Because then, you know, I want to do this work, I want to do this, I want to do that. And sometimes they want to maybe travel out. What are you going to find there? They're looking for greener pastures. How about the work of the kingdom? How about the kingdom of God? How about the preaching of the gospel? And sometimes we need hands to, you know, be on full time. And when we make the announcement, and the Lord is speaking to them in their hearts, then they will not respond to your announcement immediately. They will go behind the door. They want to go and ask the uh, full-time workers, how much are they paying you people? Because uh, if something is speaking to me, I should give my life and my time. But I need to know, I need to know how much they are paying you people before I can give my word. There you are. Just for this word. Just for this word. If everybody did like you, will not have anybody here. And all the work that needs to be done will not be done. And then we'll all be building the kingdoms of the Antichrist. The kingdom of the world. But we're going to build the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus said. Labor not for the meat which perishes. But for that meat which endures unto everlasting life. Can you say that's what you're doing? Does the gospel have any time with you? Do you have any space, any allowance for preaching the gospel, for spreading the gospel, for giving your time, your talent, your skill, your ability into the kingdom of God, into the work of the kingdom? Do you have any time at all? And then it says, which the son of man shall give, shall give unto you? For him as God the Father sealed. Look up here. Uh, maybe when you are about, uh, about 35 or 40, the Lord was speaking to you. Come and give your time. Give your life. And serve the Lord. You say, no, Lord, I'm not ready now. I I'm going to work for God. I'm going to work for God, but not now. Then after you've worked and worked and worked, your, your heart, your mind, your eyes are the kind of money you are going to receive from that secular employment. And then after the whole thing is like this. Then when you're about 63, 65, and the government is kicking you out, and the government is saying, oh, you're 65. Why did we forget you should have retired at 60? You cannot continue now. Then you come to church. I want to do full time now. Where? Oh, your brain is gone. All your strength is gone. 
All your thinking ability is gone. Now you are so weak that if you sit for about 30 minutes, you will be sleeping. Who wants to take you on to full time at 65 when the government is rejecting you and is saying you are no more, you are no more used to us? Come while you are young. Come while your strength is there, while your ability is there, while you can still sink, and while you can still put some real value into the work of God. That's when to come. Lay not up for yourself treasures on the earth. Let's come together and lay some treasures in heaven. I said we're going to lay treasures in heaven. And then great will be our reward in Jesus' name. But you see, there are people that put all their trust and money, all their trust in the things of this world. In Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter 10, as we look at Mark chapter 10, we're looking at verse 17. Mark chapter 10, verse 17, and when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? What a great question. And what a good thing he ran, he came to the Lord Jesus. I want life eternal. And in verse 31, it says, And Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure, thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Help the poor, you'll have treasure in heaven. Preach the gospel to the poor. You have treasure in heaven. Care, be compassionate, be merciful on the poor. You'll have treasure in heaven. And come, take up thy cross and follow me. And he was sad at the same. And went away grieved. For he had great possession. That is it. Or sad. He couldn't serve the Lord. And then in verse 23, and Jesus looked round about and said unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? The people who put all their trust, all their mind, all their heart, all their interest, all their ambition, all their preoccupation on money, treasures on the earth. How hard it will be for them to get to the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and says unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches? For them that trust in riches. They don't trust in God. They trust in riches. They don't trust in Christ. They trust in riches. They don't trust that God will take care of them. They trust in salary. They trust in money. How hard it will be for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. You tell me you are saved and your mind is only on money. You tell me you are sanctified and your ambition is only to make money. You tell me you love God. You tell me you are a child of God. And your brain, your mind, your thoughts, your dream, your desire, everything about you is about money. And if something does not have money in it, you are not interested. That's salvation. What kind of salvation is that? Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. God. Those are the words of Jesus Christ himself. So the Lord is telling us to be wise so that we store, we lay our treasures in heaven and great will be your reward. We come to point number three now. Treasury for our treasures in heaven. We're looking at Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 verses 20 and 21. Matthew chapter 6 verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. It's for you. It's for you. All the money you give for gospel work is for you. It's treasure in heaven. And it is for you. All the time you spend. All the ability you have. And you give everything to serve the Lord. It's for you. Because it says you are laying up for yourselves treasures in heaven treasures in heaven uh, you, you know sometimes uh, even those who say they are serving the lord uh, sometimes i'm surprised 
and they, they're more interested in, you know, when are we going to have leave? And then they begin to say, you know, in the world, that's not the world, that's church work. In the world, if somebody gets to this level, to this height in walking in the world, he must have about uh, maybe 35 walking days free, seven weeks free. And so now in the church, how much time are you going to give us? How much time do you need away from God, away from his work, away from your assignment, away from your primary assignment of doing the work of the Lord? And then there are some people now they are saying, uh, Sir, you know, in the world, I'm sure you've been in the university before. After you walk for six years, they give you one whole year to be by yourself, sabbatical leave the college. Can we do that in the church? What are you going to do for that one year? To go to the world? You've laid your hands on the plow. And you want to go for a whole year to go and do what? To go and make money. To go and rest. To forget about the kingdom of God. Jesus didn't take that kind of break. The disciples didn't take that kind of break. Neither Paul the, Paul the apostle. He didn't take that kind of break. Other people are also saying. We've been working for all these many years. For the Lord in the church. When are we going to stop? When are we going to retire? You want to retire? I didn't know that somebody wants to retire from the work of God. I thought we came to just say, I'm laying treasures in heaven. And what do you want to do for the rest of your life? If you retire now, you spend the next 20 years before you die, before Jesus Christ come, roaming about the streets, not serving the Lord. If you want to retire, what about me? I think I need to retire now. After, you know, 19, 1973 to this uh, 2007, 34 years of teaching Monday Bible study coming every Monday. And even when I'm not in town, when I'm not in Lagos, I'm teaching somewhere else every Monday for 34 years. Maybe after 35 years, then next year, you know, pastor shall retire. Uh, but you want to retire now. No cheating. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to walk together. Amen. We're going to serve the Lord together. Amen. And you know all these uh, brethren who are not on full time, the choir, the ushers, the security and all the people, they don't talk of retirement. They're not on full time, but they serve the Lord. They are here on Sunday. They are here on Monday. They are here on, they are here on Saturday. They are here on all those days and they're serving the Lord. They're not retiring. They're not taking leave. Why are we talking about, you know, I want to leave. I want this. I want days. We cancel all those things. Yeah. We're going to serve the Lord. And then we're going to plow everything we have into the kingdom of God. And great will be our rewards in Jesus' name. Yeah. But lay off for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. But where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And what we are saying actually is that we who are pastors, we who are state overseers, national overseer, region overseers, and we who are local government pastors and we who are coordinators and we who are leading the people of God. I hope you are not thinking that you are going to take some weeks off and just, you know, go somewhere nobody knows where you are. You want to serve the Lord. You want to lay your treasures in heaven. All your strays, all your mind, everything you've got. You want to lay everything down for the Lord and serve the Lord because there are souls still to be saved and there is work still to be done. And we're going to do that work together in luke chapter 12 luke chapter 12 reading from verse 31 luke chapter 12 reading from verse 31 but on the seek ye the kingdom of god and all this say shall be added unto you and then it goes on and it says in verse 32 fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom sell that ye have 
Sell that ye have and give alms. Have you ever thought about that? When there's a need in the work of God. And then, you, you know, everybody is giving something. You say you don't have, but you have some things you can sell. And Jesus said, sell what you have, and then give arms, provide yourselves bags, which works not old, a treasure in the heaven that faileth not. A treasure in heaven that faileth not, where, thief, where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is there, where your heart be also we're not looking at the things of this world amassing wealth accumulating wealth we also want to look at how to make the kingdom of god to prosper in second corinthians chapter 4 verse 18 second corinthians chapter 4 what did in verse 18 while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal that's what the lord wants us to concentrate on that's why he tells us in colossians chapter 3 as you look at all this he's telling us heaven should be number one in your heart getting to heaven should be number one priority in your life and to get to heaven you need to be born again and you need to receive the grace to live in holiness and holiness of life before god all the days of your life born again that's one and then sanctification being holy unto the lord blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god that's what god wants and then not just to get to heaven empty-handed you must lay treasures in heaven and to have treasures in heaven that means that you understand you're going to have a better and enduring substance in heaven you are laying treasures there while you're still living here on earth how can we do that you give to the poor you preach to the poor and you lay all that you have for the use of the gospel your time your talent your skill everything you've got that's how we lay, how we lay our treasures in heaven and if a uh, lot of work being done in the church preparing the church for uh, to receive a lot of souls into the kingdom you can have a part in it you can take part of your time part of your skill part of your ability part of your resources part of your money and put in the work of the lord that's laying treasures in heaven having your mind your heart your ambition your desire is the glory of god and the growth of the kingdom of god that's what the Lord is saying. You lay your treasures in heaven. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ. If you are a child of God. If you are identified with Christ. If you have died with Christ. And you are risen with Christ. If ye then be risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above. Where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth. Your interest, your desire, your passion, your pursuit. Everything you have within you. The goal you set. Set your mind, your heart, your affection on things above. On things in heaven. On things in glory on things in the kingdom of god and not on things on the earth for ye are dead and your life is seed with christ in god when christ who is our life shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory the lord is coming again and when he comes we will not be ashamed if you have laid your treasure in heaven if a lot of rewards are waiting for you and then you hear that the trumpet has sounded and then the saints are going and you're going with the saints there'll be no shame there'll be no fear because you know all your treasures are already in heaven that's what the lord is telling us tonight and he wants us to take a decision as he tells us lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth where moss and rust does corrupt and where thieves break through and steal but here is what you do and to do that immediately to begin to do that from from tonight and to make it a principle of your life that you're going to lay your treasures in heaven but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust does corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal for where your treasure is there will your heart be also we're going to obey the word of god 
and the Lord will give us his grace, his spirit, his power, his might, that will do what he has told us, and great will be your reward in heaven. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. You know what the treasures are? And now you are making up your mind that you are going to lay those treasures in heaven. Lay those treasures in heaven. Lay those treasures in heaven. Spend your money for the gospel. Gold and silver for the gospel. Ability and strength, spend it for the gospel. Your love and your loyalty, spend it for the gospel. Your ambition, your desires, place them on the gospel. Your riches and your wealth, lay your treasures in heaven. And say, Lord, I've heard. Lord, I've learned it. Lord, you have spoken to me. I'm going to do it. Yes, Lord, I'm going to do it. Yes, Lord, I'm going to do it. You know, that's what other people did. That's what gave you the Bible. That's what other people did. That's why you have those gospel literatures in your hand. That's what other people did. That's why you're listening to those messages at home. That's what other people did. That's why you're enjoying the music that draws your soul into heaven. That's what other people did. That's why you're hearing false sound doctrine. That's what other people did. That's why you're, you're being taught in the house fellowship. That's what other people have done. That's why you're enjoying the privileges of the gospel. You also should do it. The rest of us who are workers and leaders in the church will have been a blessing to you. You be a blessing to other people too. Lay your treasures in heaven. Lay your treasures in heaven. Whether you are poor or rich, we have something we can lay down for the preaching of the gospel, for bringing other people into the kingdom. Whether you're a man or you're a woman, there's something you can do. There's something you can do. There's something you can do. So that you are laying your treasures in heaven and not on the earth. So that through you, the illiterates will hear the gospel. So that through you, the poor will hear the gospel preached unto them. So that through you, the men and the women and communities will hear the gospel preached unto them. Lay your treasures in heaven. So that through you, those who have not heard the lost, the spiritually blind, and those who have not shared, had the privilege of knowing the sound gospel, the true gospel, the saving gospel, through you, they'll be able to hear that gospel. Lay your treasures in heaven. How do you spend your time? Do you spend quality time for the Lord? How do you spend your time? How do you spend your money? Do you just tag the money up in the bank? You don't feel guilty? Just having all the money in the bank? Just spending all the money, hundreds of thousands and millions, only on yourself. How about the kingdom of God? What are you going to do? Are you not going to lay your treasures in heaven? Don't lay everything on earth. Don't spend everything on mundane things, earthly things, material things, natural things. Labor not for the meat that perishes, but for the meat that endures unto life eternal. Unto meat that endures unto life eternal do something for the gospel do something for the kingdom this is your chance this is your privilege do something for the kingdom and those of us who are serving the lord i hope you are not saying i need time off the souls are still there to be saved we need more workers and those workers who are there will not be saying i need more time i need more time off cut off that kind of desire and give of your best to the lord your time your days 
And I hope you full-time people are paying tithes as well. If you are not, you're robbing God. And the leaders and the pastors, I, I hope you are paying tithes too. If you are not paying, you're robbing God. Think about heaven. Think about the kingdom. Don't just eat it all up. Lay your treasures not on the earth. Lay them in heaven. Children of God are obedient to the Lord. The love of money is the root of all evil. With some, while they converted after they pierced themselves with many sorrows, but that man of God flee these things and follow after charity and godliness and righteousness and purity. Love out of a pure heart. Follow the Lord. Give everything you've got. For the preaching of the gospel for the spreading of the gospel and be sold out and out consecrated committed to the lord lay not up for yourselves treasures on the earth where moth or rust does corrupt and where thieves break through and steal but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust does corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal for where your treasure is there will your heart be also and since you are risen with Christ Set your affections on things upon high, things above, not on things on the earth. Seek those things which are above, not things down below, for ye are dead. Your life is seed with Christ in God. And when Christ is alive, will come again, then shall ye appear with him in glory. Prepare for that time. Prepare for the coming of the Lord. And you do that by putting your attention, your affection, your love, your interest, your ambition, your preoccupation on things in heaven. Show that you are a child of God. You have a heart in mind. A heart and a mind to love the Lord. A heart and a mind to serve the Lord. A heart and a mind to commit everything you've got into the gospel. That's what others have done. That's how the gospel came to you. You now do it and allow the gospel to get to all the people. Commitment to the Lord. That's what Moses did. You too can do it. This is your time. This is your chance. This is your privilege. This is your opportunity. Lay something down. Something, something, something that is really enriching. That will enrich the gospel. Enrich the kingdom. Lay something down. For the preaching of the gospel. Do something. That God will know. That your heart, your mind, your life. Everything you've got. Is in the gospel. Tell the Lord to cancel that selfishness from your life. The self-centeredness will take it away from your life. But to give you a heart that is totally committed, consecrated to the Lord. Are there things you are holding back? Are there things you are pulling back? Are there things you are saying, Lord, I don't think I can give this. How much love do you have for the Lord then? Christ died for us and his sacrifice is very blood, it's very life. And if he has given everything he has got for our salvation, can't you lay something very important down for the salvation of other people? Start with the talents you have, the skill you have, the ability you have, the money you have, the treasures you have. Lay them down. Lay them down. Be committed and consecrated. 
Don't allow the gospel to suffer because of your selfishness. Don't allow the gospel to suffer because of your withdrawal. Don't allow the gospel to suffer because of your selfish ambition. Serve the Lord with everything that you have got. And say, Lord, here am I. I lay everything down afresh once again. All to Jesus you want to surrender. All to him you want to freely give. So that others through you will have the privilege of having this sound gospel, this pure gospel, this saving gospel, so that others will have the privilege of having this gospel preached unto them. Lay your treasures in heaven. Lay your treasures in heaven. Lay those treasures in heaven. Don't just keep them in the banks of this world. Lay your treasures in heaven. Don't walk and labor for the thieves. Lay the treasures in heaven. Don't walk and labor for the moths and the rust, the destruction and the decay. Lay those treasures in heaven. And then great will be your reward when Christ comes to take the saints home.